Um, in particular, I'll be giving examples about Groovy and Grails. Just a little bit about me before I begin. Uh, please, please increase my Twitter follower count. Um, that's my Twitter handle up there. It'll make me feel better. Um, that's my GitHub handle, and uh, I'm currently a software engineer at MindSpark. <coughs> Um, just a little bit about myself, just to uh, give some context. I've only been using Groovy for about a year, both personally and professionally. Um, my main technologies that I use are Groovy, Gradle, and Spock. So what is this talk about? Um, just at a very high level, we're going to talk about how to contribute directly to Groovy, um, contribute to Grails, and uh, the template or the process that I'm going to give is how to just contribute to great technologies in general. So my Groovy experience, um, this is a bit interesting. So I didn't know anything about Groovy or what it offered. I, I heard about Grails and other technologies, but I didn't realize they were all related. And uh, a number of years ago, I, I was Googling for new Java build systems, and Gradle was one of the top results. And I said, great, I'm sick of Ant. Let's try something new. And so. And so I tried to learn Gradle, and I was, uh, I was intimidated <laughs> by, the, by the sheer size of the documentation, by, um, by all the text that's just thrown at you. And for my use case, I had a very specific use case. You know, Ant projects are kind of weird. They have source files and a weird setup. Uh, they don't follow the Maven convention. They've got um, dependencies packaged in with it. So. You know, the default uh, Gradle build script is all about, well, take your Maven build and you're good to go. So um, I, I was a bit intimidated, and I, and I looked at some things, and, and I saw that, hey, I have no idea where to start. I have no idea what I'm doing. So <laughs> that was, that, that's my uh, first brush with, uh, with Groovy. And you know, all throughout the website, I saw that this thing uses Groovy somehow. So. I decided that I needed to learn Groovy. So this is my own personal knowledge dependency resolution. So um, I, I started on a bit of a Groovy whirlwind. Uh, not immediately. It took about another half year or so for me to, to come back around to it. But um, what I started with was Grails in Action 2nd Edition with, uh, by Peter Ledbrook and uh, I think Glenn Smith as well. But uh, it was with. Peter Ledbrook that led me to his podcast, which led me to Great Conf, which led me to a whole bunch of different technologies. And then uh, in parallel, I was working on Groovy in Action, which you just saw today is, is on sale and is going to print. And also, uh, I would spend a lot of time just going through the Great Conf YouTube channel, both the US and the EU, and just consume as much as I could before my uh, brain shut down. And of course, uh, Guillaume Laforge has the Groovy Weekly Update. That's an immense resource as well. And um, I had never used Twitter before, but you know, Peter Ledbrook's like, oh, you, you know, just get on Twitter, take a look at Groovy Lang, and, and there you go. So this is, this is kind of the, uh, the mess of things, of um, one thing leading to another, recognizing keywords and technologies and people that keep popping up over and over again. So my Groovy exposure went from me having no idea how to do a Gradle build to recognizing some of the words that I see popping up over and over again. So you know, I, I started finding my bearings. And um, well, this is, uh, at least according to my experience, I'm, I'm finding that there's a certain path that you kind of take. And even though you don't mean to intentionally contribute to a great technology, you will end up doing it somehow, maybe even by accident, because of, because of uh, what I have listed here. So really, it starts with usage. If you're not using something, you're not going to find any issues with it. You're not going to find any um, bugs or surprising behavior with anything that you're using. So really, contribution stems from utilization of the technologies that you're using. When you're using something, you're looking at documentation. You're trying to run test code. You're trying to run uh, all the sample applications that are out there while looking up Stack Overflow and everything like this. Um, and really, you don't get to use something unless you're exposed to it somehow. And, <clears throat> and uh, we have a whole bunch of nodes within this whole great community 
that is really good about touching different aspects that expose various great technologies like Grails or maybe, I don't know if you guys heard of GParse or anything else. Um, you, you hear something and you say, that sounds like it's a groovy technology, let me go check it out. And you use it, you find it's wonderful, and you end up contributing something somehow. Um, exposure also comes from a, noose, uh, a loosely knit group of, of these exposure nodes. So really, I, I tend to think of the community as Twitter, um, where you can go and be silly about Groovy Lang. But it really helped someone like me to come in with absolutely no idea and actually end up contributing to some great technologies on my own. And uh, continuing at that, so you know, if you if you participate at any of these levels, at the community level, at the exposure level, at the utilization level, you will eventually find your way to the source code. You'll eventually find something that needs to be done, and you will contribute. <laughs> so just to reiterate, the current state of affairs now that everybody's caught up is that the Groovy and Grails teams are no longer financially supported by Pivotal. But, you know, um, despite that they accomplished some pretty great things within the first quarter of this year, it really doesn't seem like it's going to impact things that much. And the reason I say that is because we have such a great Groovy community. Um, people are friendly, they're very positive. Uh, there are a lot of great projects that are based on Groovy. And uh, of course there's Horse Groovy. Um, if you don't know about Horse Groovy, you should just check it out. Um, but yeah, I, the Groovy community is very welcoming to newbies and, and they're just very friendly to each other. They're probably one of the smartest people I know and they never make me feel like a complete idiot. So that's good. <clears throat> this is kind of how I envision the Groovy community. So uh, FUBU is a clothing wear that came from Queens, New York um, a few decades ago. And FUBU stands for For Us, By Us. And uh, I kind of imagine you know, the Groovy core team as the textile manufacturers who, uh, who you manufacture the shirts and put them on the racks and, and the community people like us come and either inspect the shirts and say, hey, you need this fixed or we can put together things based on the work of these Groovy core team. Um, <clears throat> again, I, I just want to emphasize that there are different le levels of contribution. Um, and I think that they're all important as they increase the vector and the likelihood for, s for either spreading the information or making other people aware. And uh, yeah, if you're not doing any of those and you're contributing directly to source code, I think that's good as well. So just really quickly, um, this is an example of a, uh, of a great community level contribution. So um, Guillaume had mentioned that the transliteration of his name in French to English is William Smith, a.k.a. Will Smith, the Fresh Prince. So I, I immediately couldn't get that out of my head and I had to just get that out there somehow. And so, um, you know, I, I, I made this, I, I printed it out, and uh, you can see my awesome MS Paint skills here. But what ended up transpiring was a nice conversation. And um, for those of you who know Tomas, over at Netflix, he, um, he did a really great job with Photoshop, you know, clean edges and things like that. So here you have the, <laughs> the Groovy Core team, uh, you know, Guillaume as uh, the Fresh Prince and Cedric as the Stern, uh, I don't know, Butler, I guess he is there. But yeah, I, these kind of conversations happen all the time and I find myself learning either about people or about the community or about projects that are in play. Um, <coughs> Twitter is a great resource and I'm using it just because of Groovy. So let's talk about contributing to Groovy in particular. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to say that good open source uh, projects tell you how you can contribute. And I'd say that Groovy is a good OSS project, therefore Groovy has a very nice contribution guideline. And um, I'll, I'll send the slides around later, but this is essentially a hyperlink to their contribution page. So, in the interest of uh, being in a place where maybe I don't have Wi-Fi, here's a little snippet from the, from the top of the contribution page. So there are a whole bunch of ways you can do this, and, and um, at least in Groovy, they've concentrated it down more to usage and uh, bug tracking and actually then you know, modifying, helping out with documentation, with the website, 
and then with the code itself. So they kind of have a similar um, prioritized list of ways you can contribute based on level of effort, so to speak. So um, I find one of the easiest ways to contribute to a, any kind of project is to offer some kind of help with documentation. Um, you can see this lovely quote from the Groovy Contribution Guide. They specifically say, don't hesitate to help us improve it, to fix typos. And I just stopped right there, because typos, that's the easiest thing you can do. Um, documentation is sort of the hello world of contributions. Um, and you know, when you're reading documentation, because you don't know about a certain API or a certain contract, you're bound to find some kind of typo in there. And as a matter of fact, it so happens that uh, the Groovy team actually likes to uh, accept these um, corrections in their documentation. You can see that two of the last three accepted pull requests, which were done rather recently, were for typos and for documentation correction. So, you know, if you, <laughs> if you just imagine yourself as a, as a vulture sitting waiting for typos to crop up, you can really get your GitHub green streak going at like the heaviest green level. This is, this is what you would like to show everybody, right? Like, oh, I'm such a good open source person. Um, you know, you, you, your mind starts going, it's like, oh yeah, like I'm, I'm a really expert, groovy documentation guy. And then you can sign it with your name there, you can get a certificate from, I don't know, from Guillaume himself. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, there's the possibilities of uh, reinforcing that good behavior by becoming maybe a groovy knight. You know, you can just stick your face and surrounded by all these, uh, these uh, hardcore groovy people. So with having said that, what I'm going to do is attempt to do a live documentation contribution. And this sort of goes through a, a meta process of how you would go about contributing to Groovy itself. So before you can contribute to Groovy, you need to make sure that you have the following prerequisites. So make sure you know how to use Git. I know um, some people are still using Subversion or CVS. I'm sorry. Uh, you make sure that you have a GitHub account. So for the uninitiated, Git is a technology. It's a set of binaries. It's a way to version your, uh, your code. GitHub is a social site built on top of this that really enables open source activity. The two are only related in that GitHub utilizes Git. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, make, sure that you, make sure that you clone the latest from the Apache organization. So there are a bunch of things that are in flight. This presentation is up to date in terms of what URLs you should be hitting, which mailing list you should be talking to. So make sure, um, make sure you uh, clone from the Apache repository and the incubator git, uh, sorry, the incubator groovy git repository. Um, as a part of your process, you should just make sure once you're done, you push up into your own fork. You won't be able to push into uh, Apache's incubator for Groovy anyways. You won't have access unless you're part of the core team or part of the uh, committers team. And then, you know, when you make your pull request, just make sure that you submit relevant information about the work that you've done and, and why it should be included. So finding an issue. Um, this happened fairly recently. I, I'm taking a look through Groovy documentation to see how something's actually implemented. And if you take a look carefully, this is uh, the default Groovy methods Java class, by the way. You'll see um, right off the bat, it iterates through and list. And you see it pops up and list again. So I thought, oh yes, we have an opportunity. This is time to contribute and get that green streak going. <clears throat> so I ran a grep against, uh, against the source code to see if there were any other instances of and list. And we got a whole number of them. So it was not only that location in default Groovy methods, but we see that we have it copy and pasted a few times even, it seems. Um, we see some stuff from Invoker Helper, and we get additional thing for free, which is this uh, JMX listener factory, in which this class factory is used to create an listener. So we got that guy for free, so that's, that's bonus. So let's talk about doing the work. Um, all I'm doing is taking the output from before, I'm parsing the file name out, and then I'm getting a unique sorted list from that, and then just doing an in-place um, set streaming editor to replace 
N with A. Um, that's all this is doing. So I'm going to take this right now. Make sure, yeah, so this is the, this is the Apache Incubator Groovy project. Um, yeah, so you can see here we're pointing at Apache. Let's just make sure we're up to date. Oh no, okay. Yeah, I think I lost my internet. Oh no. Thank you. <laughs> Something bad had to happen. Okay, so let's try this again. There we go. And we're up to date. Excellent. So I'm just going to paste in this command here. Uh, we're just taking advantage of um, GNU tools and piping. So we run this. Excellent. We're done. Let's take a look at what happened. Cool. Our three files are here. And let's just make sure that, as a sanity check, everything looks OK. So yep, we're going from N list to A list, N list to A list. Same, same. Yep, we just want to make sure that we're not modifying anything that we didn't mean to. That looks good, that looks good, and that looks good. So now that we're all ready, um, Yeah, so you just have to verify and make sure that you touch the files that you meant to. Otherwise, you'll be extremely embarrassed when you uh, submit your pull request. Um, you just want to make sure that you respect the project's protocol. In general, it's, 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 um, it's good manners to make sure that your build compiles locally, that, you, that you're passing all the style checks, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, make sure that you, know, you run tests and things like this. So let's just take the time right now, and we'll commit this. Okay, so now we've committed. No, I didn't add anything. That's right. So after we add our files, we'll commit. There we go, three files changed. 90 assertions, 90 deletions. That's, that sounds pretty cool to me. I'm ready to have 90 insertions and deletions in the Groovy project. So let's just make sure that it's here again. Looks good. So um, time to submit the pull request. In this situation, <clears throat> you need to head over to the Groovy incubator project. Uh, I will star this. And also, I will fork this. And I will fork this to myself. So while we're waiting for this to take hold, ah, that was fast. So what I'll do is I'll take this SSH clone URL. I'll come back here. I'll add it to my origin, uh, I'll add it to my remotes. Oops, that did not work. There we go. Get remote add, thank you. Yes, so let's just make sure everything's here. Cool. So now we'll push up to my fork. Looks to be successful. Let's just make sure that we're looking good here. <clears throat> so here we go, this could potentially be my first Contribution. So now if we navigate back to the Apache incubator, we can, oh, sorry, if we actually navigate back, we should be able to, yes, create, review, and create, um, we'll make a pull request here. So just as a sanity check, let's just go through and make sure again, I'm very paranoid. Yeah, file endings. That's why I got the 90, uh, 90 lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the pull request. If they ask for the line endings, well, I'll take care of that in a subsequent thing. Um, but yes, we have to make sure. So we'll see if I get yelled at. But um, 
Hello from Great Confu 2015. Here we go. All right. And look at that. So now when we navigate over to the pull requests, we see that we now have a pending one. So it was that easy. <coughs> now, now we just sit and wait. We're going to check to make sure that our important contribution has made it and then be upset when it's not. So um, that, that's a very, uh, very trivial way of doing contributions, but I think these kind of things matter, especially to people who are new to this, or maybe if, um, maybe if uh, you know, you're reading something and then you encounter a typo, it's the kind of situation where your brain gets thrown off track and you're trying to process what's being said and then you have to come back, minor context switch. But uh, there are a lot of different ways to contribute to the Groovy Core project, and one way is to learn ASCII Doctor. And why you should learn ASCII Doctor is because um, basically all the documentation is written in ASCII Doctor. Uh, at a real high level, ASCII Doctor allows you to pull in source code, and so, well, it allows your test, it allows your uh, documented code to be tested before you um, incorporate it. So your documentation never lies to you. Um, another way is to subscribe to the uh, mailing list. As Guillaume mentioned earlier today, there are uh, new mailing lists. Make sure you sign up on that. I did that just last night. Um, that's also a really good place to just catch noise about Groovy, see what people are talking about. It's also a good place to kind of uh, virtually raise your hand and say, hey, you know, I've been thinking about um, doing macro methods and macro stuff, and I have this really old pull request. When will you please accept this? And that's the kind of place you would go to discuss things like this. Um, if you want to contribute at the code level and you have no idea where to start, usually unit tests are a good way to start. Um, I mean, they have a lot of coverage, but they can always use more. And the more tested their code is, the better they'll feel about it. Mailing lists are, are definitely the way to go to get more in-depth um, direction in terms of what to contribute. The other thing to do is to browse the issue tracker. So they've migrated from Codehouse's Jira to Apache's Jira, and everything has migrated over. And Guillaume even, or the team, maintains a list of issues that are good, that are labeled as good first contributions. So these are low-hanging fruit, maybe like uh, some kind of null check or some implementation for a to-do, and that might make you feel more fulfilled than doing a, a typo fix. So. Yes, so Groovy and ASCII Doctor, as I explained. This is a snippet of ASCII Doctor for those who are not familiar. It's very similar to, uh, similar to Markdown. Um, this is just a way of demarcating that we have source code coming in, and then this include acts as a way to pull in text from the actual unit test that we have here. The arguments that are passed in here just specify where to snip and cut. And basically, when you're processing, <coughs> When you're processing the ASCII doctor documentation, this will pull in your code, stick it in there, and continue on its way. The corresponding design patterns Groovy test looks like this. And this is, I believe, using a Groovy test case. So these are all evaluated as scripts, and just they make sure that they compile and that they run, et cetera, et cetera. So the final product of running the ASCII doctor task is you get this really beautiful display of Syntax highlighted code that's um, that is you know uh, formatted properly. It maintains white space. It has uh, constant width characters, things like that. And um, yeah, you get really nice formatting. ASCII Doctor also allows you to plug in different backends for um, for different kinds of outputs. So this would be an HTML5 output as an example. They ship with PDF and EPUB, Mobi, Kindle, all that, all the different kinds of stuff. This presentation was written using an ASCII doctor backend for uh, reveal.js. So, okay, so we covered about uh, contributing to Groovy, and we actually did a, a Groovy contribution. So let's talk about contributing to Grails. So according to my assertion earlier, Grails is also a good open source project, and this is because Grails tells you exactly how you can contribute to Grails. So. Um, you can see it looks very, very similar. Some of the differences are that instead of uh, mailing lists, they have a Google group, which is essentially their mailing list. And they, they additionally recommend that you go on Stack Overflow, look for Grails questions, and interact with the users and, and uh, help everybody out. 
Their bug tracker is not Jira. It's um, just GitHub issues on the Grails. They, they're still in GitHub. They're not in the uh, ASF. I don't recall if that was their plan to move there, but for now, if you want to do any kind of contribution to Grails, you would do it against their, their Grails um, organization in the GitHub. So like many projects, uh, they recommend that first you contribute by documenting. And uh, you can also modify the website, which is a separate entity, um, separate code base. And again, covering uh, adding test cases. And if you have some ideas about uh, new features or new things that you would like to see in Grails, um, that's where you would go to the Google groups and say, hey, I'd like to either work on something or I have an idea for how Grails can be better, or I think this is a neat feature for Grails. So just as in Groovy, Grails, um, Grails also likes to take typos. This uh, change was submitted in March, and it was merged by Jeff Brown. So you know, that's, uh, again, uh, proof that we have opportunities here. So again, we, we need to start by actually finding these things, but I like to think as the finding of issues more as a background process that you're always doing. You're just always uh, looking for opportunities to contribute. So in this situation, Craig Burke, um, who is an avid hater of indentation in Spock specification code, um, noted that in the Grails documentation, they suggest that you do indentation. Well, I think there's an even bigger issue here, which is, uh, well, maybe I'm just fastidious, but if you take a look at the, um, if you take a look at the Spock blocks here, the when, the, the, the lines for when are indented with four spaces, and then the then block is indented by two spaces. So uh, I know not a lot of people know about Jeb, they don't know about Spock, and they know that they're looking at something related to this because this, um, this, is, this happens to be functional, uh, the functional spec example. So, you know, they could be thinking, is this significant? Like, is, this, is my stuff going to break if I, if I fail to adhere to this? So here we go. We found another contribution opportunity. It doesn't matter if you think, uh, you know, uh, let's I actually cover some background. So, you know, while people are busy about, uh, you know, touting their religious views about indentation and Spock specification code, um, there's something even more fundamental, which is that the indentation is inconsistent. And just to make people not question whether or not this is a significant issue, uh, we just should make it consistent. So, yeah, it, uh, it doesn't matter what you think. It's, it's up to the project and what the project uh, references. So, again, just talking back about inconsistencies. Inconsistencies in documentation, in code samples, in test cases, um, just add to more additional overhead for people trying to use this, um, trying to use this library or framework or project. So, yeah. And uh, to make matters worse, if you take a look at um, the unit test examples, there's no indentation. So you can tell that various people are subtly pushing their religious agenda regarding indentation in different parts of the documentation. And that's really not the place for you to make your, make your claim. Um, but what is a bigger issue here is that um, if we want to talk about indentation is, at all is that we need to be consistent. Again, this leads to more confusion. New users might think, oh, okay, unit tests means there's no indentation, and that's what a unit test is. And functional tests mean that there are indentations. And so, you know, in this crazy world, you, someone can go to Stack Overflow and say, I have a unit test, and then someone wants to help out with, uh, with indentation in their spot code, and they say, well, I'm not writing a functional test. And you can see how that just keeps going. So, um, I'm going to do another live, a quick live uh, pull request. So in Grails, because they own this and it's not a mirror, you can actually come into this uh, GitHub page where the offending code is. Yeah, four and then two. So what we can do is, um, some of you are already familiar with this, this little pencil icon um, lets you fork the project and edit the file. So it's like you're editing in place, but GitHub takes care of forking it for you. So let's go ahead and indent this to uh, another 
two spaces. And what are we talking about here? We are um, making indent length consistent. And here, hello from great conf view again. Okay, let's propose this file change. This is, um, this is pretty easy. Uh, I'm very proud of myself. I've contributed now to Groovy and Grails in, in, in a matter of 10 minutes. Um, please pay me more money. Okay. Here we go. Sanity check. I didn't change any line endings. That's good. So I hope this one gets accepted quicker. So um, that was pretty painless. And now that we just wait again go back, find more issues, and address them. So uh, if you want to contribute more in general, I, I highly recommend going on Stack Overflow. I know uh, Bert Beckwith, um, Jeff Brown, I know um, Tim Yates, they kind of dominate the conversation right now. But it always helps to have more surface area in terms of um, coverage in Stack Overflow. And um, if you want to contribute more at the code level, I highly recommend going on the mailing list, even if it takes a while. But um, I mean, the teams will always be happy to have additional hands to, to do volunteer work, essentially. Um, there's also a lot of great groovy projects out there on GitHub, uh, Rat Pack for one. So uh, there are a lot of projects that use groovy. Uh, feel free to explore and make similar contributions. A lot of these projects are set up in the same way. They're set up with contributions in mind. Uh, again, with Rat Pack, documentation, uh, unit testing, proposed features or bug fixes, things like that are always welcome. And uh, I'm sure the other projects would appreciate that as well. So the bottom line is contribute. And you don't necessarily have to do typo fixes or anything like that. Just make sure that you participate at any one of those levels, at the community level, at the exposure level and at the usage level, and you'll eventually find your way to the source code. So yeah, any questions? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's not. I think you're right. My presentation is on GitHub. I am accepting pull requests. <laughs> OK, it looks like it removes it. Yeah, you're right, though. There's no, there's no hyphen here. So that's, that is a good catch. And where did my? Oh, I clicked out of it. OK. Yep, absolutely. So I can either take the pull request or I can do it myself. But yeah, this, um, this stuff is on, uh, is on GitHub. In order to get more followers, if you haven't already followed me, um, I will tweet this link out on my Twitter handle. So here's the actual source code for it. It's just a standard um, ASCII doctor project utilizing Gradle. And oops, not twitch.com. And let's do this. Slides for great conf. There we go. OK, um, any more questions? Yeah, pretty straightforward, right? All right, thank you.